I'll go ahead and share it. Hey everybody, come on in. How's everybody doing this evening? I'm just up here trying to share the link real quick on my social media pages. So while you guys are coming in, please, um, for those of you who are on YouTube, um, because I'm on YouTube and uh, Instagram <coughs> tonight, but for those of you who are on YouTube, Please make sure you share the link. Um, also, make sure you like the channel if you're already um, not subscribed to my channel. And let's see, I'm posting this on my other social media page as I speak. And come on in. Let me know how your day has been. Let me know how your Thanksgiving has been. Live right now. Love and hip hop Hollywood reunion part two. So, what did you guys think about the um, reunion part two? Also, for love and hip hop Hollywood, if you've seen it. I love and hip hop. Ooh, it help if I spell it right. Love and hip hop Hollywood part two. Okay. <clears throat> I'm gonna just go ahead and post this link of the live and all my social media websites before others come join the live. The public. <clears throat> and of course, Facebook wants to be moving all super slow. Oh, yeah, you guys, don't forget. Um, we do have a uh, Facebook page. I'm sorry, not a Facebook page. Well, yeah, I have a Facebook page, too. But um, we also have a Facebook um, a Facebook group for my Tanya's Prime Time TV slash media reviews. So make sure you, um, I'm going to put the link in the chat. So that you can click on the link. And once you click on the link, it takes you directly to our Facebook group. Again, it's Tanya's Primetime TV slash media reviews, just like the YouTube channel name. And don't forget, I'm also on Twitter at Tanya's Primetime TV slash media news. And I'm also on Instagram at Tanya Primetime TV. And those of you who are watching me on Instagram right now, make sure you also um, go over to YouTube and uh, subscribe to both of my YouTube channels. Um, one of them is Tanya's Primetime TV slash media reviews. And the other YouTube channel is Tanya Knows No Limit. So those are both my YouTube channels. And again, those of you who are checking me out from uh, YouTube, make sure you go over to my Instagram 
and follow me over there under Tanya Primetime TV. And it's all one word. So I just got to post the link and a few more groups. And then I'll get started on this live. Mm -mm. Okay, I just got to post it one more spot. Okay, I'm trying to do it as fast as I can. I don't want to do it f too fast because YouTube be thinking you're not human if you post stuff too fast on their, I mean, not YouTube, but uh, Facebook be thinking that you're not human if you post stuff too fast on uh, Facebook. And then they try to block you for a certain amount of time. It's just ridiculous. But anyway, okay, I got it posted on all my social media websites. So again, welcome everybody, welcome. I know it is a holiday, but I'm assuming that some of you guys have a day off tomorrow, and just like me, and so you can stay up late and kick it with your fam and you know whatnot, or you can look for some entertainment on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what I'm here to do today. But anywho, um, I hope some of you guys caught my live earlier. I was coming at you live from over my godmother's house um, where we had Thanksgiving dinner today. And basically we kicked it over there today and had a good time. Had a pretty good time. Um, so I hope everybody again had a great time with their family and enjoy some good food and some good company and some good laughs and make some memories. That's what holidays are for. You know, a lot of people get together and end up having arguments and disagreements and people fighting and throwing food across the table like they do on these reality shows or throwing drinks in people's faces. <laughs> but anyway, hopefully none of that happened at anybody's house today. But, um, Again, make sure you, when you come into the room, make sure you like the video, subscribe to my channel, and share. Please make sure you share my channel, share my videos on your social media platforms. But, again, this uh, review is on Love & Hip Hop Hollywood, Season 5, Episode 18, and it is Part 2 of the Reunion. So, let's jump right into it. Um, the show had started off, where it's, basically where it started off, it was a continuation of last uh, episode at the end of season one. Tierra and Akbar, they were still going back and forth, you know, arguing over that darn sex tape. Um, like, at first, you know, when I was watching the entire season, at first throughout the entire season, I was like, now who is telling the truth here? I didn't know if it was Akbar. I didn't know if it was Tierra because just a, a lot of different things was going on. Like Tierra kept saying he did it, but as we saw as the season went on, Tierra was making it seem to her friends like they had broke up, like they were no longer seeing each other. She hired that expensive attorney, Lisa Bloom. Um, and so I'm just thinking that, you know, she, she really left them. And she's moving on. But then when we start seeing that she went back to him, um, he had her on tape when they were in bed. And, you know, all kind of other things going on. I'm thinking, okay, a lot of people are saying, Titi, she released that for publicity. You know, she released it herself, even though she kept pleading that she didn't. So, anywho, um, I didn't know who was telling the truth. And then, you know, at the beginning of the reunion, too, uh, Akbar and his wives 
for some reason, you know, when TT was accusing them of leaking the tape, they kept bringing up her alcohol alcoholism, kept bringing up the fact that she went to rehab. You know, she's a drunk, you know, calling her all out of her name. And I'm like, what the hell does this have to do with who leaked the darn tape? I mean, why are you bringing up her being a drunk? And we don't know if she's still a drunk. We don't know if she's still an alcoholic. Um, she did went to rehab. She completed her rehab. That was last season. So, I mean, but they calling her a drunk. But mind you, at least and during the season, I didn't see, I don't recall her drinking anything. I don't recall her getting drunk, getting tipsy, anything like that. So I'm not going to go for that. But then, um, I believe maybe they brought it up because they were trying to humiliate her, you know, like she wasn't already humiliated enough. She's on national television. She went to rehab on national television. She got out of rehab. She um, started dating some guy who lied to her and told her that, you know, well, basically, he didn't lie to her. He told her, um, he didn't tell her about his wife and the other girl, but he did tell her, like, the relationship was ending or, you know, something like that. Basically, I believe he lied to her. I don't think that Tiara knew that he had a wife and a sister wife. <laughs> I just don't believe it. I just, I don't know. I just can't believe it. Y'all let me know what y'all thought about that though. But I just cannot believe that she willingly participated in that type of relationship with a guy who not only had a wife, but he had a sister wife. So I don't know that. I just don't think that she would have just jumped into that relationship. Had she known that. And then, um, it's one thing to have a sex tape, sex tape leak. You know, that's embarrassing enough. Some people, it might not be so embarrassing. They'd be like, hey, okay, yeah, so y'all saw my sex tape, yeah, and I was getting it on too, huh? <laughs> Actually, people to rate it and everything. But anyway, you know, that on top of, like I said, dating that guy with the multiple women and everything, that's embarrassing. That's really embarrassing. So I think they was just trying to humiliate her even more by bringing up the fact that she... They called her a drunk, but I'm going to just say that she went to rehab because I don't know. I don't know. But anywho, um, anyone, everybody else on the uh, show, like on the panel, everybody was kind of like defending her and taking up for her. Even Moniz, she did something that she always does best, which is throw something. And she did. She threw a shoe directly at Akbar. Thank God it missed because she probably would have got in trouble and kicked off the show. But anyway, everybody was having her back. I mean, Nikki, baby, Bridget, Kelly, all of them was like going in on Akbar. And Bridget was even going in on his girl. I'm about to say his girlfriends, on his wife and sister wives. Um, she was even going on them like, okay, I understand the type of women that you choose, the type of women that you choose to be with, but the women that you're already at, why would they even allow you to do something like this to another woman? Like, what kind of self-esteem do they have? But they claim, they claim he's a good man. <laughs> they claim he's a good man. So I, I don't know. That's what they say. But then, you know what? When the host Nikki, I mean, when the host Nina Parker, when she asked Alejandra and Sade, were they broken? Because I've already said it several times. All the women that he chose are broken. They beat down, they broken, they they have no guidance, they uh, addi have addictions, I mean, all type of issues, uh, self-esteem issues, and everything. So the host, Nina Parker, she asked Alejandra and Sade, you know, when he met you guys, did y'all, were y'all broken? Did y'all have issues? You know, he was trying to rescue you from or whatnot, and... I don't believe they answers. They answers seem too scripted for me. But again, y'all let me know what y'all thought. But the first person um, she asked was Alejandra. And Alejandra, she was like, yeah, I was broken, you know, when I first met him. Because when she first, when she first came to L.A., she said she was at her lowest and didn't have any structure in her life. And Nikki Baby was like, and you call this structure? Girl, bye. <laughs> and I'm thinking the same thing. You didn't have no structure in her in her in your life. And you call this structure? All this mess, all this chaos that you guys have in your Harlem? 
He got one wife. He got a sister wife. He got a girlfriend. I mean, I, I don't call that structure. Not by far. But anywho, then Sade, she went on to say, Akbar changed her entire life and has done way more good than bad. She even said, oh my God, she had the nerves to say, he is not a womanizer. Can y'all believe that? I was like, okay, girl, what you mean? What you mean? Please break it down because to me, just from the outside looking in, what do you call it when a guy claims that God is using him to be a captain saver hoe? Basically, in so many words, that's what he was saying. <laughs> Rewind it if you're not sure. Basically, he was saying God sent him here. It is his mission. It is his duty to be a Captain save -a I was like, he got two wives. He got a wife. He got a sister wife. He wanted Tierra to be the third one. And he even, if y'all remember, he even asked Offer K. Michelle when they met up for drinks um, to be the fourth sister wife. But she was like, nah, bro, I ain't, I'm sorry. I can't, I can't do that. <laughs> I can't do that. <laughs> I didn't sign up for this. So anyway, she turned his little offer down and everything, but he really asked her. I couldn't believe that. He was like, you know, I, I, how about you? Would you like to come? And she was like, oh, excuse me? With her little drink in her hand. Excuse me? No, I know. I didn't call you here for that. But anyway, <laughs> um, then Sade said, Akbar is not controlling with them, but Tiara needs somebody like Akbar to control her in some type of way. Man, I see why TT walked off that stage because that whole, I can imagine when they were together, how it was. Even after she found out that she wasn't the only girl, I still don't get it though. She, she knew she wasn't the only one. She went back. She claimed she was in love. Akbar said on the show, he don't love that girl. He ain't he ain't never loved TT, and I believe it. He didn't love her. He was just using her. Just using her and taking advantage of her. But you live and you learn. You live and you learn. Tierra, every relationship she seemed to have on these reality shows be a huge failure, but but you live and you learn. <laughs> but then did y'all think, like I said earlier, did y'all think it was kind of like scripted kind of like they claim he's not controlling, but it was like the madness, the madness. I could see literally right through the BS and Akbar is controlling both of those wives or whatever you want to call them. Um, and I, again, I thought it was kind of scripted. Like they were in cahoots for like their own 15 minutes of fame. Um, who was it? I can't remember if it was Tierra or K. Michelle. Somebody on the show was like, you know what? I think they're in it just for 15 minutes of fame. I agree. I agree. Like I said, I don't, I don't think it was in the reunion one, uh, review that I did. I think it was the episode before that. When I said, I believe this was all set up. Now we know some of this stuff in these reality shows. It don't be... It don't be it don't be set up. Some of it might be kind of scripted because the producers be telling them we need this from you guys, we need that from you guys, you know, whatever. Um, but I really think it was set up by Akbar, the part of him getting with uh Tierra. Like, I believe, like I said before, they probably follow the show. They probably fans of the show. When they saw her go to rehab. Somehow, Akbar got in contact with her, met her when she got out of rehab, and met up with her and start dating her, and, you know, then it went on from there. They on the reality show, her friends is like, oh, you messing with this dude? He's pretty well known around here in these parts, and he dating such and such, and he married and such and such and such and such. So, I think, I really think that they purposely... He purposely got with Tierra in order to be on TV. I don't know. That's just what I'm thinking. But y'all let me know. It just seems too, I don't know, it seems too played out, too scripted for me. But anywho, I think that this is all an act either on him or maybe all three of them all playing this all together to get a little fame. But anywho, again, that's what I think. But then they kept calling her a drunk and saying she has an addictive personality and that's why she was addicted to him. Um... This man, he thinks he is all that 
and a bag of chips. And again, he thinks he was sent here by God on a mission to be Captain save a ho to a whole bunch of broken women. <laughs> but I hope nobody else falls for this man. I hope a lot of women, when they see him, when he first approached them, I hope they be like, oh, I saw you on Love and Hip Hop. No, thank you. No, thank you, boo. Moving on. <laughs> but anyway, um, again, I truly don't believe that uh, Tierra knew, you know, what was going on with this man, his personal life when she first met him. Um, when she met him, it was great for him, bad for her. She fell in love. And when she found out, you know, that she wasn't the only one, what happened? It was like literally the next morning, like, come on now, that's a huge coincidence. The very next morning after she told him she did not want to be a part of his harem, um, did I say Harlem earlier? <laughs> I like Harlem, New York. Um, I meant harem. So excuse me. I'm sure y'all knew what I was talking about. But um, she didn't want to be a part of his harem. She didn't want to be a part of that because she didn't sign up for that. So she told him, you know what? I'm moving on. The very next morning, the tapes get released. And she claims he did it. It was, it was just like such a coincidence. So, I mean, of course, all her friends are going to believe it. You know, everybody in her circle is going to believe that he did it. But then again, as the show went on, I was like, okay, come on, sis. Did you or did you not release your own sex tape? Because it wasn't making no sense. Why she keep running back to this dude? Why she keep running back to this dude? And he leaking these sex tapes or videos, videos, you didn't hire that lawyer, Lisa Bloom, or whatever her name is, the most expensive attorney, well, one of the most expensive attorneys out there, and had a public, a public press conference. <laughs> but you still with this dude. I didn't get it. But then she said, hey, that's what love does sometimes. But anywho, um, I think Alejandra and Sade, if this is really a serious relationship and they not all just playing with us, I think that they are brainwashed. I really do. Um, she talking about she going to take the charges for him. Like Tierra claims he did it. He claimed her ex-boyfriend did it. Um, and then at the press conference, Alejandra was like, uh, she did it. And then the next time Alejandra said she saw TT did it, she saw Tierra do it. Tell me, I was sitting right there. She was at our house when it happened. So I'm like, okay, whatever. <laughs> like me, like Nina Parker, the host said, it's pretty clear. It's pretty darn clear who leaked it. But anyway, moving right along. But nope, I gotta say this. She is stupid, and she will take the rap for that. And she really did not leak the sex tapes. Why would she leak the te sex tapes? I mean, that's not something really a woman does, especially if the woman is not involved with you sexually. So I really think she is covering for him. And if she, if she accept, if she takes the charges and go sit in jail over this fool, she's dumb. I'm sorry, she's dumb. But anyway, now moving right along. Um, on to Brooke and Marcus. Nina asked Brooke. Why she inserted herself into the Akbar situation. Brooke claims she shared the information with TT because she thought she already knew. Uh, but before TT could turn around and read her, because Tierra was Tierra was about to go in, um, Bridget Kelly, that's when she stepped in to defend Brooke. And she was like, first of all, first of all, they all were in London. And you remember when they were in London and they, Bridget Kelly was supposed to be having an interview and the people that were interviewing her, um, <coughs> excuse me, they ended up talking to TT and all them because they like the ladies interrupted Bridget Kelly's interview. So when they started talking to TT, they was like, you know what, what's this up with you and this man named Akbar and, and, and Kate Michelle. And she was like, what you mean? What's up with us? Um, K. Michelle and him is flirting, was flirting around on IG. So they pulled it up and they saw K. Michelle talking about with your, uh, what she call him? With your sex leaping, sex leaking, but, or something she said, you know, like he can with him and all that kind of stuff. Um, and Tierra had got upset, but 
Bridget, she was telling, you know what? When we saw that, when we heard them going back and forth, we all had your back. Everybody was ready to go at K. Michelle. Like, K. Michelle, what's up? How dare you do something like that? This is not a joking matter. I mean, I truly believe after watching the entire season and watching reunion part one and watching this reunion, and I'm trying my best not to be biased, but I really think he leaked it. I really think he leaked it. It's just, mm, I don't know. I don't know. Again, y'all let me know what y'all think. But they did have her back. So, Tierra, she was up there, you know, trying to get mad at uh, Moniece and everything because Moniece is cool with Kay Michelle. And she feels like she probably knew that something was going on. But Kay Michelle, I don't think she really was interested in Akbar. I think she just was really interested in if he leaked that tape. Just like she asked him when they met up for drinks, he sat down, he wanted to chop, tap it, chop, chat it up and everything. And she was like, she just cut to the chase. I just want to know, did you leak the tapes? And he said, no. She was like, okay. And that's when he tried to invite her <laughs> in for his sister wife number four. <laughs> but then after that, Nikki baby and solo Lucy, they got into it. Um, Thanks to the Never Have I Ever game, when they was in London, they was playing, I'm sure a lot of y'all played it too, the Never Have I Ever game, where you basically, it's like a drinking game, and for some of y'all who probably didn't watch the show or don't know what it is, and you ask somebody, never have I ever, I don't know, flew a plane or something, and everybody who never ever did it, you know, they raise up their hands or whatever. Well, <laughs> um, Nikki Baby, she was asked by Brooke. Well, basically, she wasn't asked by Brooke. But the question was, never have I ever had a threesome with Solo Lucci. And everybody was like, no. And that's when Brooke was like, uh, that ain't what I heard, Nikki. That ain't what I heard about you. And so then they had got into it. So... Um, on the reunion part two, Nikki Baby and Solo Lucci got into it because of that. Um, but to Nikki, Brooke was like, um, when she said that ain't what I heard, you know, she was basically like, and if it was, I mean, and that's what I was saying after that episode, when I did the review of that episode, I was like, and what if she did have sex with Solo Lucci, what's the big deal? I mean, <laughs> That's how they do in them circles. Them entertainers, them singers, them rappers, the stars, the actors. I mean, that's what they do. They mess around with each other. Normally, normally, I mean, if you're a rapper, they usually date a rapper or somebody in the industry. If you're an actor, they usually date an actress or, you know, vice versa. So I don't know what the big deal was with Solo Lucci. Um, and then, you know what? He's kind of like kind of cute in a kind of sort of kind of way <laughs> he's kind of cute kind of cute but um if he is lying if solo lucci is lying i mean lying on your penis is so played out that's like so junior high like i mean you so tired and through if you lying on your body parts like that you was just tired and through so i hope he wouldn't you know lies like that but anywho um, then the topic turns to Brooke, the catfish. Um, when they was, <laughs> okay, remember the episode when Brooke, she had pretended to be Marcus, her, uh, fiance, and she assumed that Amber Diamond was messing around with Marcus. So what she did was she, um, used that app, that app, there's this app. I need to find out what this app is, but there's this app and, um, <clears throat> excuse me. There's this app and you can text somebody and put in somebody else's phone number. And the person receiving a text will think it's that other person. So that's what she did. She put in her fiance's number on this app and started texting back and forth with Amber Diamond. And Amber Diamond, of course, she thought she was texting Marcus. So anyway, they was flirting around and everything. And I'm like, are you serious? Like, She's really flirting. And Brooke was like, make sure you come to this event and make sure you wear white and make sure you don't wear no panties. And, you know, all this. And the girl was like, okay, you know, just 
they was going back, they was flirting. And I'm like, oh my God, he really is either, because the thing was, Amber Diamond, she's a beautiful woman. She's a beautiful woman. And on her IG, she be posting all these pictures, like um, barely any clothes on. Not totally naked, but very, very, very close to being naked. You can see everything. <laughs> and Marcus was just liking all her stuff. He was like, 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 like. He was liking all her photos, all of them. And Brooke was jealous. That's what I think it mainly was. Brooke was jealous. And then she also was thinking, you know, is they talking? Is they, you know, hanging out together or whatever? You know, she started, you know, the wheels started spinning. You know how we women get the wheels started spinning. And that's what brought up her using that app to text the girl to find out what she would say or what her reaction would be if she said certain things. But when she told her to wear white and don't wear panties, and she was all for it and flirting back and everything, that's when I said, okay, Mark is hitting that. Mm. Marcus, you know you hitting that. But anywho, and then the girl came to the event and Brooke was performing on stage. They walk in <laughs> and she was like, were you guys expecting Marcus? Because if you was expecting Marcus, he ain't going to be here. I'm the one who texts you. So they got pissed off. Man, I'll never forget that scene. Man, uh, was it uh, Amber or was it? No, Bridget Kelly. Bridget Kelly, she tried to inter intervene. She tried to, you know, uh, step in and keep things calm. Man, Amber Diamond's mom, Sean Love, must have snatched her daughter's wig off her head. Y'all, when I said I was on the flow, when I did that review for that uh, episode, I was telling you I was on the flow. I was dead. I was dying. I was hollering. I was like, no, she didn't. Like, you standing next to your daughter and you just gonna snatch the wig off her head? Like, whoop! Just snatch the wig off her head and start beating Bridget Kelly over the head with it. Her daughter is up there. She got like a little, I don't know what she had, a wig cap or something, do-rag or something on her head under the wig. <laughs> I was like, no, she didn't grab her daughter's wig and starting to beat, commence to trying to beat <laughs> Bridget Kelly over the head with it. That was funny, but anyway... <laughs> I was like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. I think that was like, for the entire season, that was like the biggest gag for me for the entire season. But anyway, I was in tears. I was really in tears. But then Marcus, he claimed, he claimed nothing was going on with him and Amber. Um, he said it just, you know, it doesn't just, it, it wasn't like that. It wasn't like that. You know, Brooke... She over-exaggerated. He He's like, it just wasn't like that. And then he said, you know what? It doesn't hurt to look. And you're right. It doesn't hurt to look. You know, you can look, but you cannot touch. That's usually the unspoken rules in a relationship. But I don't know. Me personally, I think something between them, either recently or in the past, literally from the text message responses, that makes me think that Amber and Marcus had something going going on either recently or in the past. And Brooke just doesn't know about it. But that's just what I believe. That's what I believe. But anywho, um, then they started discussing how Brooke was running around telling everybody who would listen that she was engaged to Marcus when he had never officially proposed to her. He bought her a ring. He showed it to her mama. He showed it to her mama. He never did show it to Brooke. You know how you men, they go to people's families. They probably, you know, I'm thinking Marcus probably went and asked for her hand in marriage, you know, from her family, showed her the ring. I'm in love with your daughter. I want to propose, get married, you know, da, 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 da. And Brooke found out about it, found the ring, put the ring on. And said she was engaged. But before she found the ring, they had got into it and got into an argument or whatnot. She put the ring on and she told him, you know what? I, I guess in the past, there might have been some kind of infidelity issues. So Brooke told him, you know what? Before we get married, before we get married, I want you to go and I want you to sow all your vile oats. Just go out there, do you, you know, 
don't get no girlfriend, you know, because you got a full fiance over here, even though he didn't propose yet. You got a whole fiance over here. He goes out there and get him a woman. <laughs> he go out there and get her a wo- get him a woman. The woman thought she was pregnant. She went to uh get a pregnancy test. It turned out negative. Brooke was like, okay, moving on. All right, you had your fun. You sold enough wild oats. <laughs> we need to bring it in. We need to bring it in. So anyway, she had put the ring on, was telling everybody she was engaged. She was not engaged. Marcus never proposed to her, but she was just going around flashing her ring, showing it to everybody, you know, who would listen that she was engaged. But anywho, um, it ended up working in her favor. It ended up working in her favor. He eventually finally got down on his knees and proposed to her the way that he should have proposed to her in the first place. But what do y'all think about Booby? Okay. Now, y'all know Booby is the ex-husband of Keisha Cole, and they have a son together. Um, Booby, he has showed up, you know, on the scene when he was sweating Marcus, remember that episode? He was sweating Marcus over Brooke. He even threatened him. He was like, uh, you better do right by Brooke and or he's gonna see them hands and all that. Matter of fact, they almost got into a thing, got into a fight. But anywho, um I don't know. I think he and Booby, uh, I mean he and Brooke must have had some serious relationship. She claims that they're just really, really, really good friends. She claims they are even best friends. And even though Booby, you know, he had moved on. First, he was with uh, Keisha Cole. Then, you know, they got a divorce. And then he's with, I don't know who the heck he's with now. But he said that he got a woman. He said that on the show. He told Brooke that he got a woman. But I believe that he is still in love with Brooke. And they was asking her about this, like, do you believe that, you know, he has, he's, his feelings for you is way different than the feelings you have for him. She's like, yeah, to, to me, that's just my best friend. I ain't falling for it. I ain't falling for it. Ain't no man doing all that. <laughs> ain't no man doing all that i mean he was going hard about what he gonna do to marcus and he was like marcus out in these streets and he's doing this that and the third and brooke he don't deserve brooke and you know blah 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 i don't know i think that they were just more than just best friends so y'all let me know what y'all thought about that part in the reunion but then um they jumped to k michelle and her credit card receipts um, all this season, all this season, her old personal assistant, Paris, had been telling everybody that she only spent $50 on Uber rides with Kay Michelle's credit card. But Kay is now pressing charges because she's still claiming that Paris spent over $300 on Uber rides and it wasn't all for business because it began with, um, I don't know why she ain't got no car. I don't know. I know the traffic there probably ain't all that good, but she don't have no car and you somebody's personal assistant. How are you a personal assistant and you don't even have your own whip? I don't know. But anyway, K. Michelle let her, uh, gave her a credit card, put her name on it and, um, says she can use it for Uber, you know, for Uber. But then K. Michelle claims that the $300 she referring to, it wasn't business because, in the beginning, um, Paris could use the car to travel back and forth, you know, travel back and forth to wherever K. Michelle was for business. I don't, I, I don't know what to believe about this. Um, if K. Michelle was right or if Paris was right, but what I do know is that they both were best friends. And K. Michelle was up there. You know, I loved her. I loved her so much. We were best friends. I would have done anything for her. Um, when you have a relationship that deep, best friends, family, whatever, um, I if I was K. Michelle, I would just give her a chance to pay the $300 back. That's what I would do. I wouldn't be dragging it out through the court for 300 funky dollars, and K. Michelle got money. And I know it's about the principal when somebody really stole from you. I know it's about the principal. It's the principality. But $300, it was a best friend. She she did it on Uber. It wasn't like she went out to the mall 
and bought some clothes. Or she went to the bar and racked the $300 of liquor. Or bought her some, I don't know, new furniture. Or got her hair and nails done. Bought some jewelry. It was for Uber. And Paris claims she used the Uber to go wherever K. Michelle was. Again. I don't know. I think it was a lack of communication. There's one big under misunderstanding. But I think K. Michelle should let it go and just take the money back. Don't go to court. Just take the money back. But then, um, for me, y'all let me know what y'all highlight of the show was. But for me, my highlight of the show, at least, um, yeah, I think it was just this one thing. Uh, when Moniz apologized to Princess. <sighs> These ladies, oh my God, oh my God. Y'all remember when Moniz was talking a lot of stuff about uh, uh, Princess. Princess was pregnant and she had told Paris, you know what? Whenever y'all see Moniz, drop a pen and I will be right there. So that's what they did. Moniz was at a fashion show. Uh, Paris and them stepped out, dropped a pen to uh princess princess came up in there got on stage grabbed the mic start going off on moniz moniz got pissed she picked up a chair and proceeded to try to throw the chair at princess and princess is pregnant like big and pregnant you know there's a baby on board and you picking up a chair so anywho anywho on reunion part two moniz apologized to princess for trying to throw the chair at her when she was pregnant with her daughter melody um that shit was petty as hell and i don't know i know it's a reality show and sometimes things don't always appear to be appear to look like they're supposed to be so i don't know if she really meant to throw that chair at her or if she just because you know every single time they get into an altercation the security guards is right there i don't know how much money they get paid but i hope they get tips <laughs> <laughs> because they be taking a lot of hits, a lot of heels, a lot of stilettos to the face. I mean, they be taking drinks to the head. I mean, they be getting messed up. <laughs> so I hope they make some really good money. But anywho, um, she apologized. She owned up to it. But um, Princess, you know, although Moniz kept pushing her buttons and pissing her off, she apologized to Moniz as well because she has said some unkind words um, to Moniz, you know, regarding her son. So she apologized. They both, both ladies, they sounded like they were really sincere, like they were really apologetic. They really meant it. And they hugged it out as well. They actually, you know, stood up and gave each other a hug. So that was like the highlight of the show to me because they were going at it like constantly all season. So I want y'all to let me know what y'all really thought about this episode about the reunion, about the different cast members, especially Akbar and TT. Like, have y'all came to a conclusion? <laughs> My conclusion is I think Akbar did it just like the host, Nina, said. It's pretty clear who leaked the sex videos, the videos. It's pretty clear. But y'all let me know what y'all thought about that. Um, also, about the booby incident with Booby and Brooke. Um, do y'all feel like there was more between Booby and Brooke than Brooke is letting on? And the last one is Amber and Marcus. And Marcus. What is y'all conclusion on that relationship? Do y'all feel like there was more involved in that relationship than what Marcus is leading on? I don't know. I don't know. It seems pretty fishy to me in both of those situations. But y'all let me know what y'all thought. Let me know what y'all thought about the uh, entire uh, reunion part one and two. Also, also, don't forget, Love and Hip Hop Hollywood New York comes on again next week. And guess who's going to be on that show? You already know. Safari. I mean, that is where he started. The boy came from Love and Hip Hop New York. Then he jumped and bounced around to Love and Hip Hop Hollywood. Now he's going back to Love and Hip Hop New York. Go figure. But anyway, anyway, you guys, thanks for tuning in. Uh, make sure you also are uh, subscribed to my um, other YouTube channel called Tanya's Primetime TV slash Media Reviews. 
don't forget to get on my Instagram, Tanya Primetime TV, all one word. And also in the chat, I have the link. Ooh, let me make sure I put the link in there. I think I did. Uh, hey, Monica, I had my screen pulled all the way up, so I don't even know when you came in, but happy Thanksgiving, honey. Did you just get here? I'm sorry, I had to screen, like, pull, I had to scroll, I had to scroll back up to, uh, I was wondering why I didn't see any of my, uh, chat, <laughs> but anywho, uh, I couldn't even tell how many people was watching, I'm just talking and going on and on and on, but anyway, um, I hope you had a wonderful Thanksgiving, honey, um, I was just telling everybody, make sure you are subscribed to my other channel, Tanya's Primetime TV slash Media Reviews. And follow me on Instagram, Tanya Primetime TV. And also, I'm about to put the link in here for our Facebook group. The Facebook group is called Tanya's Primetime TV slash Media Reviews. And let me put that link in here before I forget. Okay. Okay, there's the group. All you have to do is literally click on the link. It takes you to Facebook. Click request to join, and I will add you to the group, you guys. We are slowly building that group up. Um, I try to mention it every time I go live. Sometimes I forget, but I try. I try. Don't judge me. <laughs> but anyway, I am about to get off this. I don't know if I'll watch some TV or watch some of the other uh, other you guys' um, channels. To see what uh, videos you guys made, you guys made lately. I am so tired. I am so tired. I am literally, literally running on fumes, but I'm trying to keep up with all the reviews because missing a day or a few days, shoot, all the channels, all the shows that I review, I can easily get backed up. <laughs> I can easily get behind. But I am going to sleep really good tonight because. Um, I've been so busy. I had candy out before in some videos and uh, showed y'all pictures of all the orders I did because um, I'm a personal cake decorator and um, custom decorator. Let me just say that. Um, and so I had seven orders that I had to do yesterday. And I was literally up from Tuesday evening, like 10 o'clock. And I think I finished my last order around like 10 o'clock uh, Wednesday night. So for like 24 hours, I was baking, um, seven orders. Mind you, when you do a custom decorated cake, <clears throat> for all you who are bakers or might have, might know a little bit about baking. Um, it's not as simple as going to the store and buying a box, bringing it home, whipping it up, putting it together and just take some frosting out of a can and from the store and just slathering it up on there and giving it to you, the family. Um, <laughs> it's a little more detailed than that. Um, you guys, I, each cake that I did approximately took about three hours from start to finish. Um, now bigger cakes that I do like tiered cakes or wedding cakes. Oh my God. Those can take like five to eight hours. I mean, it just depends on if you use a fondant or if you're just using buttercream or, I mean, it, it, it can take a long time to make a cake. And some people be like, like um, most cakes average around 40, 45, you know, the average cake, 40, 45 for a custom cake. And I do over 20 different flavors. But um, some people be like, Wow, I can buy a cake in the grocery store for like $9.99. <laughs> I'm going to tell y'all this because a lot of y'all don't know. If y'all are not in the baking industry or if y'all do not work in a bakery uh, or if y'all don't have a good old friend who is a cake decorator. But cakes in the store, cakes in the store come off an assembly line. Trust and believe when you go to when you order a cake from the store, no matter if it's Costco, Walmart, Hy-Vee, um, you know, anywhere that's your grocery store, 
they make them in bulk in a factory. Um, they order stores, order them. They're already frozen. They're already iced. All they do when they get to the store. Oh yeah. Also they can keep them frozen up to six months and keep the frosting that they order in a big, huge pail. Um, they can keep it frozen for up to six months. So it's no, you never know how long your cakes have been in the store before you get it. Um, when they take them out, they thaw them out. Um, and they decorate them. So basically they take so many out for a week, thaw them out, decorate them. How, you know, put a little decoration on there, maybe a little rose here, a little, a little border, you know, put your happy birthday, whoever. That's what they do. That's all they do. You ever go to a store, you ever smell a cake bacon in your grocery store in Walmart at Costco. At Sam's, do you ever smell a cake bacon? No, you don't smell a cake bacon because they don't bake cakes at the store. I'll be telling people this all the time. <clears throat> really? I thought they make the cakes at the store. Do you see a stove up in there? <laughs> you got to think about it. You got to think about it. I know these facts. I know these facts. I do a lot of research on cakes because I am a cake decorator. But besides that, I have a very good friend who's been baking for over 17 years at a store locally in our city and she's like man ain't nothing like some fresh homemade cakes compared to the cakes that they serve not like store cakes aren't any good but when you go there and you purchase cake and you be like oh this one tastes really moist and then you purchase one maybe a month later for another of your child's birthday or whatever oh this one is dry this one don't taste nothing like this frosting don't taste nothing like the other i mean because Depending on how long the cake's been frozen, depends on what your cake is going to taste like. <laughs> but anyway, so back to my point. I was up 24 hours baking because each cake literally from start to finish, icing, baking my frosting. I make my own frosting. Um, for an average cake, it takes up to like three hours to perfect it, to perfect it and make it look professional, like custom decorated. And so... Let me show you guys. Um, I think I showed on my last live. But I'm going to show you guys the cakes that I made um, for this holiday for my customers. <coughs> of course, y'all on Instagram. Y'all can't see right now. But, okay. This is my Facebook page. I have a Tanya's Delight Slice by Slice Facebook page for my uh, cakes. And this is one of the orders I had. It was a but, bleh, banana pudding cake. Uh, that was for one of my customers. Um, here's a carrot cake. One of my customers wanted a carrot cake. Homemade, by the way. All homemade. Frosting and everything. Um, here's another carrot cake from another customer. I had two customers order carrot cake. And here's some strawberries. My Actually, my cousin ordered these for her little grandkids. She was like, I just want some strawberry cupcakes. They just going to eat them on the night before Thanksgiving because all my grands is coming over. So I made them for her grandkids. Nothing, nothing too much. Um, and then here's a, a strawberry crunch shortcake cheesecake for one of my customers. And another strawberry crunch shortcake cheesecake for another one of my customers. I had two of those orders. And then another banana pudding cake because I had two of those orders. It was funny because I had two, two, two. And normally I'll have like something like, I don't know, off the wall, like five strawberry crunches and maybe one banana pudding or maybe one carrot cake, you know, something like that. But all of these are like two banana pudding cakes, two strawberry crunch shortcake cheesecakes, two... Uh, carrot cakes and then the cupcakes for my cousin for her grandbabies but um those was the all the orders um that i had this holiday and as you can see um they're custom designed some people don't know what they want they just know they want a cake and they want it to look pretty <laughs> so i just go with the flow and some people they might see something you know that's why I have a Facebook page because they might see something um, 
or say they don't know what they want. They just know they want a cake and they want it to be nice and it's for their mom or, you know, something like that. And uh, thank you, Monica. And um, yeah, check out my Facebook page, uh, Tanya's Delight Slice by Slice. I have hundreds of photos up there. But um, they'll just be like, you know what? I just want something nice, something pretty, you know. And I'll just go with the flow. Or I'll say, go to my page, look through the cakes. If you see anything you like, I'll make it like something I've already made. Or <clears throat> go online. You can go online, you can Google. See a cake somebody else made, show it to me. I don't like to duplicate people's work, but I'll I'll go with the image. You know, I'll go off of the picture. Like, I see what you want. I know what direction to go now. And, you know, I, I make it into, you know, what I want. <clears throat> I'll make it into what I want. But anyway, um, you guys, I'm going to get off this... Uh, live and i need some sleep i'm like oh thank you lord i don't have to be back at work till monday um i don't know if i'm going black uh friday shopping any of you guys going shopping for black friday <laughs> i don't know i guess it depends on how well i sleep tonight um i'm waiting on my sister uh who i normally go with to the side if she wants to go because she just recently purchased a house and she's like i want to go i want to go i want to go but then her guy is like we don't need to spend all our money you know we close next week so she's like she don't want me to spend any money <laughs> so i don't know but anyway if i do go we'll probably get up super early in the morning and try to find something but anyway you guys Thanks for all tuning in. Uh, make sure you like the video, share the video, and subscribe if you're not already a subscriber. And make sure you click that link that I posted in the chat. It goes directly to our Facebook group for Tanya's Primetime TV. So make sure you go over there and request to join the group, and I'll add you to the group. But, again, I hope you all had a wonderful Thanksgiving. I hope you ate well, had fun with your family members. And... In the meantime and in between time, Primetime Squad, as usual, stay safe, be blessed, and I'm out.